you and I were previously talking about Margarita Oswald. <laughs> There's this incredible story, which most people don't know, and I was hoping that you could share with me of well, what happened the day Kennedy was assassinated. Well, I was a reporter at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, which is my hometown, and, uh, and I was the night police reporter, so uh, President Kennedy came to Fort Worth and spent the night before he went over to Dallas the next day. Well, when, when he was shot, uh, I was sound asleep. I didn't get off till 3 o'clock in the morning, and so I, I didn't uh, know anything about it. My brother uh, walked in and uh, woke me up and said, you better get down to the paper. The president's been shot, and I was just in a total fog, and I got dressed and went down there, and uh, by the time I got there and I was parking, it came over the radio that the president was dead. And uh, so I just went up to the city desk and was just trying to help them answer the phones. As you can imagine, it's just total bedlam. And we were printing these extras. Every time they'd find something new, they'd literally stop the press and replate the front page. And then uh, there's another extra. And people were lined up waiting to get these newspapers coming off the presses. So I go up to the city desk and I'm just trying to answer the phone. And a woman says, is there anybody there that can give me a ride to Dallas? And I look at the phone and I said, well, lady, you know, we don't run a taxi here. And besides, the president's been shot. And she said, I'm about to hang up the phone. And I hear her say, yes, I, I just heard on the radio. I think that my son is the one they've arrested. And it was Lee Harvey Oswald's mother. And I, so I quickly forgot that part about we don't operate a taxi. <laughs> uh, I went to the auto editor of the paper who uh, the local car dealers would always give him a car to drive every every week and then he'd write a little report about it in the Sunday paper and I had a TR4 sports car and a two seater and I thought well I can't take this woman over to Dallas you know in that so I went to him and I said Bill what kind of his name is Bill Foster I said Bill what kind of car do you have this week and he said well said I've got a Cadillac sedan said I don't know why, I don't know what I'm gonna write about that and I said well that's great come on and so Bill and I got in that Cadillac because she had given me the address where she was on the west side of Fort Worth, and we drove out there, and there she stood on the curb, and she was wearing like a practical nurse's uniform and had a little blue travel bag, and so she got in the back seat with me, and uh, uh, I interviewed her all the way uh, over to Dallas. It was about an hour and 15, 20 minutes to get over there, and uh, so in those days, we, we never told people who we were. Uh, if they asked us, we told them. Uh, but if they thought we were detectives or something, we just let them think that. And I always wore a snap brim hat, so I'd look like a detective, you know, look like Dick Tracy. And uh, so anyway, we get to the Dallas police station, and I took her up, the first uniformed cop, and I said, I'm the one that brought uh, Oswald's mother over here. Is there any place we can put her where these reporters won't be bothering her? <laughs> well, I was only 26. And so we, they actually found a little office in the burglary squad and we went back there and this was great because there was a phone back there and of course we didn't you know, if you didn't have a phone you didn't have a story there's no cell phones or anything and so uh anyway we stayed back there and then i'd go out in the hall where the other reporters were and gather up information and call it back into the paper we had a bunch of reporters over there by then so finally it was getting to be dark and uh, he, uh, she said to me, Mrs. Oswald said to me, said, is there, uh, you think they'd let me see him? And I said, well, I don't know, I'll go ask. So I go to the chief of homicide, his name was Will Fritz, and he said, yeah, we probably ought to do that. They, would, they did that sort of thing in those days. So we're ushered down to the holding room off the jail, and they're going to bring him down there and let him uh, talk to his mother. And I'm thinking, my God, I'll never have a story like this again. And... <laughs> And finally, there's a guy standing in the corner and said, who are you? And I said, what? He said, are you a reporter? And I said, well, yes. And he said, uh, you get out of here. He said, if I ever see you again, I might kill you. I mean, and he was so mad. I, I tended to believe him. And I'm sure he didn't mean it, but whatever. Uh, so I, at that point, I excused myself. And, uh, and I'd gotten a real good story from her on the way over. She was going on about how everyone would feel sorry for Oswald's wife and no one would feel sorry for her and they'd give money to his wife and she'd starve to death and people would turn their back. I, mean, I believe she's the single worst person I ever met in my life. And, uh, but anyway, I mean, 
you know, people say to me, why, why, why are you a reporter and why are you still working? Well, where else, you know, could you have an adventure like that, you know, in the midst of a great tragedy like that? And that's, that's really kind of in a sentence why I've always loved being a reporter. I just like going behind police lines. I love talking to people who made the news, asking questions and, you know, generally being nosy. I mean, it just, it was just always fun to me. I didn't get into it for noble reasons. I, I got into it because I thought it was a lot of fun, and, which is the main reason I think, and that's what I tell young people, pick out something you really like to do. Maybe it's not journalism. It's not for everybody. You know, you have to work a lot on Christmas for one thing, but especially in the beginning. But if you pick out something you like to do, don't worry about the success. If you get good at it, the success takes care of itself. And and you will be doing something that you enjoy doing. And I think that's, to me, that's my advice on the best way to spend your life. And maybe maybe it's the reason I'm still around, you know. I'm, I'm 